So I traveled to Lynchburg for a three day tournament, which could be an A tier, but it's really just a bigger B tier where Chris Dickerson, Brody Smith, Randon Lotta, and a couple other big names showed up. This was the battle for Bedford. And this video is gonna be round one, where we played at one of kind of now the world's most iconic courses, a Paul Macbeth designed course called New London Tech. I was really excited to play this in a tournament. I've already posted a video basically saying, hey, is New London really that hard? Spoiler, yes, it is really that hard. I think even plays close to 10, 15 to 10, 20 ish. Big shout out to my caddy Forrest for coming out for all three rounds to film. Tomorrow's video will be round two at Ivy Hill. And then Sunday, we'll post the final round back at New London, seeing if I can cash at this tournament, especially with this form change that's going on with Drew. And ultimately my goal is kind of like a top 10. I wanted to shoot well, there's 80 something people in the field, but it all starts out with this iconic downhill 370, 90-ish foot par three. OB running all along the right side of this whole entire course. So we'll get into that and I'll see you guys at the end. Welcome to the commentary booth. Hole one, as I said, is just basically straight ahead. It's 390 feet and it's reachable with a mid or maybe even a putter if I throw it hard. But I decided to disc up to this strike, which is a straight to stable seven speed. I knew if I pumped it on a bit of hyzer, it wouldn't flip past flat. And if it does flip past flat, you got a lot of danger of OB. I really just wanted to get myself as far down the fairway as I could and give myself a look to start out the tournament with a birdie. I always like trying to start with some birdies. A lot of times I try to give myself some time to ease into tournaments, but recently I've been trying to actually kind of hit the ground running. My putt has been the one thing that I was really worried about going into the weekend. And unfortunately, I think the first one off the top of the cage, pretty confident comebacker though, which I'm excited about moving us into hole two, which historically has always played as one of the two hardest holes on the course. That's because it's a par four that's 977 feet. I'm throwing a C-Line CD1. I thought I put it on enough hyzer, but sometimes you get some like tournament juices flowing through you a little bit that make you throw a little harder. So it flipped, turned, and luckily somehow got through into the center of the fairway again. And here we'll have a nice little slow-mo montage, I guess. Uh, we accidentally hit the slow-mo button because I forgot to charge my phone. And so Forrest was trying to charge it through his phone the whole round. And this whole play so hard because you really want to get another 80 to 100 feet up the fairway from where I'm at. Instead of being really aggressive and throwing a driver down this corridor, I decided to throw my strike again, that straight to stable seven speed, because I knew if I hit it flat or slight ante, it would drift, but it would more than likely get back to the left before it goes on the OB all along the right side. Decent throw. My throw is actually looking a little bit better nowadays as I've been continuing to practice that, but I'll have some more videos coming out about that soon. Drifts all the way down to the right side and it leaves me with this look to get up and down for a pretty simple par, which I would be stoked to take both rounds on this hole. I'm taking my ESP zone, gonna give it a touch of flex out of the hand, but you can kind of see that was a little bit awkward. That was a pretty nervy upshot out of me, and I end up leaving it about 25 feet to the right, but it should be a relatively routine cleanup to get the par on hole two, which I know would probably take about a stroke and a half on the field. If I recall correctly, I'm actually gonna look at the stats real fast. I think it played over a stroke over par. Yeah, 1.6 strokes over par, and I just added to the over parness, unfortunately. Shout out to Peyton St. Ledger, who was the only birdie on that hole for the entire day, and it's gonna move us into hole number three which is pretty straight a little bit of turn so i'm deciding between a pathfinder and a midnight prowl 2 depending on if i feel like i'm releasing it flat or anheuser or on hyzer if i wanted to throw the origin the pathfinder is what i decide on to try to just throw it straight down the gap it'll get that little bit of turn but unfortunately i leave it pretty low it's gonna have the right shape and i thought it was even closer than it was but it leaves me with about a 40 foot circle two bid to try to take my first birdie of the round and get back to even after taking the unfortunate bogey Again, the putt's just not coming out confident, and one of the things that has been consistent between all three of those putts has been slight low and slight left, meaning, for me, that I'm not putting my wrist into the putt and not spinning it correctly. But it's all right because we should have a pretty simple birdie chance on the next hole. That was a pretty disappointing throw with my Firebird because that kind of force over Anheuser is kind of my bread and butter forehand shot right now. It's only 290 feet, you just gotta throw it down the tunnel. Unfortunately, don't make that happen, but I can get up and down with my zone to give myself about a 20 foot putt remember to actually put my wrist into it and sometimes it just takes you some time to remember the right cues for your body when you're not like fully practiced as you need to be like i haven't been with my putt hole five is a 707 foot par four you got a left and a right gap you can throw the roller the forehand or just a big turnover backhand i'm deciding to go with my most stable destroyer on the anheuser forehand line because there wasn't a ton of wind so i knew if i flexed it a bit it'd probably get a good bit down the fairway and give myself a look 
Unfortunately, I don't quite get over on it at all and I was scared it was going to go a B, but a spotter told us that it actually hit a stake, stayed in bounds and rolled back, so it left me with a look from about 380 feet into the basket on the hill. And this is going to show a pretty decent like strategical mistake. You can see how far the disc gets back to the left, and a lot of that's because I wanted to throw slightly flippy, so I changed this as you guys saw at the beginning of that clip, but I needed to throw significantly flippier because the hill was dragging my body down the hill, meaning I was going to be naturally throwing on a little bit more hyzer, didn't quite account for it enough, and that meant that I kind of squandered my birdie chance, had a long bit at it, but it moves us into probably the hardest hole of the day, a 1,275 foot par 5. Some call it the hardest hole in disc golf, I guess it's trying to rival that really far hole at Northwoods Black, but the first shot is basically just trying to get out the gap, and I tried to get a little aggressive with it, throwing that strike again, because I had been throwing it so well on that touch of hyzer where it just pushes out to the left. I leave myself with a really good shot that I have about 520 feet to that back wall of trees that you see before the hole breaks to the left, and if I can get a hold of my destroyer correctly, I could potentially give myself a birdie look, and at worst case, a really easy par. You saw I kind of went back and forth to my bag there and just kind of decided to stay with that blue destroyer, which is actually one that I had to put in the bag right before the round started, because as I was warming up, somehow in the little practice field, I lost my pink destroyer, which is my metal flake one that I've been beating in for a little bit, and the blue one was significantly more stable, which is why it stabled out to the left and has forced this couple of pitch outs. So I'm trying to get up and down for my bogey with a little standstill envy shot. Ended up getting a really good run on it. My card's calling for it to go in. I didn't want it to go in because I didn't want to have too far of a putt to save the bogey. And unfortunately, on the two hardest holes of the day, I've already taken my first two bogeys. Hole six did play 1.51 over par, so a little bit easier than hole two. And there was one birdie. Big shout out to the disc golf kid, Luke Callahan. Now, I know that these clips might be going a little bit fast, but hole seven is probably the easiest hole on the course, in my opinion, to get the birdie because it's three very routine shots. The first is a slight turnover backhand at 300 feet with an envy. The second one is another envy that I just kind of throw over those trees. And the third one is whatever putter you want to cross a ton of OB to get close to the basket. Unfortunately, I've been kind of overcooking that ESP zone and it leaves me with a longer putt than I'd like to get my birdie, but you gotta take advantage of those birdie chances when you get them. Really happy to make that putt, especially because hole eight and nine are pretty difficult birdies to get in my opinion. Hole eight's a 600 foot par four, even a little shorter. Unfortunately, I get through the first gap and smack a tree that leaves me maybe 100 feet off the tee. I'm trying to get back to the central fairway because it's really the only clear line to the basket on this hole. I honestly think of this hole as a little bit of a scramble hole. If there ever was a gimmicky one in this course, it'd probably be this one. I end up hitting a tree a little bit early and it kicks me back to that fairway so I can throw a simple hyzer with my pathfinder. I end up throwing a little too much hyzer on it, but it sneaks through and it leaves me with probably a 45 or 50 foot putt to save the par and I really do not want to take another bogey. That definitely feels like one of my better putts that I've made in the tournament in a while, especially because it was kind of framed up through those couple trees. Hole eight is, or hole nine is the one, two, three, four hole, 1,234 feet. I'm throwing that blue destroyer and I've really needed to flex it a lot more than that. I'm lucky to even get over that ridge to give myself some sort of look. I want to flex this again, but I'm still thinking that it's like my pink destroyer. Unfortunately, I throw it like that disc and you can't hear it, but I'm saying to the camera, oh my gosh, I can't believe that thing was so stable because it pushes me all the way to the left side of the fairway. This isn't a hole that in my game plan says birdie, but if I throw two really good shots, then I can try to execute that on the third. Unfortunately, my third shot ends up going straight into the ground instead of getting any skip, and I have about a 380 foot hyzer that I decide to throw with the destroyer. Luckily, the grass is pretty grabby down by the green, so I think that if it gets close, it'll probably stick. And I only have like a 10 foot or so putt to get my par, which I'm really stoked on for that one. Even though hole 10 is pretty long, it does seem to be one of the more routine holes if you want to get a simple birdie on this course, because it is a relatively routine hyzer shape. I finally learned to throw some flex on this disc, and I'm able to carry the 444 foot hole down the hill. Barely get that putt over the cage, but it is another birdie and it brings me back to even moving into the back eight holes. I definitely want to play this under par. I want to break 68, but it's going to start with a near shank on hole 11. It's kind of funny. I think I threw through the gap two or three times during my practice rounds. Unfortunately, just early releasing it. But you know, Kevin Jones has his tree at Idlewild or whatever tournament. I have that gap apparently. I decided to flex an honor to try to get down to the basket, but it's pretty framed up and you have to hit a very specific straight shot through it. 
give a pretty good bid on my putt and have about a 20 foot cleanup for another par. At this point, the name of the game is just keeping my score even. I came into this tournament thinking if I shoot a 10-17 tournament, I'll be 990 rated going into the off season, which is the goal that I definitely had. Hole 12 will give me another chance at getting that birdie to give myself a little bit of a cushion. And I throw my Firebird. It doesn't quite get as stable as I thought it was going to. My nose angle was probably a little bit better than I anticipated. And I have just inside the circle to try to get another birdie and get under par at this course. And my bad putting comes in. I think I was thinking about score, honestly. I was like, oh my gosh, I can get to under par. And instead of just thinking about executing the putt, I absolutely fluffed it. Kind of like this drive. It's a forehand, and I want to throw a flex forehand, but I've been overcooking everything recently. It puts me in no man's land on this hole since there are two fairways. I try to cut the corner, and I think that shot would have actually been perfect if I missed that tree, but it gives me a pretty simple standstill zone into the basket, all framed up to try to save the par. Almost put it in for the birdie, but I'm able to have a pretty simple cleanup to stay even going into hole 14, which is a 390 foot par three. You want to hit this initial gap that I'm about to be throwing not through it's the gap that's way to the right of that throwing something that turns and then gets a little stable at the end i'm getting a little tired i think there's a little frustration but i honestly think it's just that i'm tired going through this whole course I have a pretty solid upshot with that zone big shout out waz tyler wozniak gateway sponsor guy i think out of the east coast able to clean up a par and i'm thinking birdie on 15 because 16 17 18 are not birdies in my game plan so this is my last chance to get under par Forrest, my caddy, was so disappointed in me that he didn't even record the upshot that got me out of the woods. And now I have to get up and down for a par from about 350 feet, maybe closer to 330. I'm throwing my Pathfinder, thinking that it'll kind of stand up and turn a bit, but because it's going up the hill and I threw it on way too much hyzer, it leaves me pin high just to the left over here. But still definitely a makeable putt from just the edge of circle. Just miss it on the right side. You can only have so many good putts when your body's going through so much stress throughout the round. Court, since New London is such a course that you need to be on all the time. Can't believe myself too many of those. But there are still opportunities to get under par. It's just going to be difficult. 16 is a very specific forehand shape that I try to slow down because I was overcooking them in practice. Unfortunately, I got the nose a little too up and didn't hit it hard enough because I was getting a lot more tired. And it leaves me with a relatively difficult upshot to get to the basket. I'm only maybe 110 feet away, if that, and I have a good gap to throw my zone through. Thought I pured it and just hit that last tree. Pretty disappointed because now I know that I have to make another 50 footer, otherwise I'm gonna go further over par. And I had the opportunity to have a really solid round if I just kept it clean throughout the last four holes. Give it a pretty credible bid. I'm not too sad that I missed that off the top, especially when it doesn't leave me with too far of a comebacker. But I go bogey bogey moving into the final two holes, which in no way are birdies on my game plan. Hole 16 maybe, hole 17 didn't even have a look in practice but it's a pretty straight shot through the gap. I never threw this shot in practice, but it looked like it shaped up for it correctly. So I threw my C-Line CD1 and absolutely pured it, actually giving myself a straight line down this second gap that you have to throw through if you wanna get the birdie. I'm about 330 out and I know that I just have to hit this initial gap with something that's gonna stay straight and finish left. So I'm deciding between my honor, my C-Line CD1 that I just threw and pured the gap with, and my strike, trying to test the run up, seeing if stuff is in my stance so I can get it out of the way because I am slow slightly off the fairway. Unfortunately, I was a little more aggressive on that run up of my actual throw than my practice run up. And because of that, I got a little off balance, shanked it, couldn't hit that gap, shanked it again. And my potential birdie look, which honestly 17 here at New London is kind of like a bucket list birdie for me. If I could get that at all, I'd be so happy. It's going to turn into a bogey. So bogey, bogey, bogey. Now we're just trying to stop the bleeding and take a par in hole 18 because I don't think I can birdie it. Maybe next year when Worlds is going on and I have a little more distance, but absolutely not right now. 
through a really beautiful shot with my Star Destroyer to get me basically exactly where I want to be, framed up with these two pine trees, or whatever trees they are. I'm not a tree guy. Everyone on like DGN always says the name of the trees, and I'm like, how do you know so much about trees? I decided to throw my Echo Star Destroyer because this hill is graded from the right to the left down the hill, and I don't want to move down the hill because that'll give you no look towards the basket. Leave myself a really simple upshot in with my zone, maybe giving it a little half bid, but a really easy cleanup for a par. Finishing me at three over for the round. So tapping out that putt for a solid, easy par on the last hole I'm really stoked with. Pretty unfortunate to just take that turkey of bogeys right during the middle of the round, but I ended up with a plus three 997 rated round. Officially 997 or 998 since ratings updates have officially happened and this tournament was a few weeks ago. It's hard to be happy or mad with the round, especially being my first like consequential round after starting this form change with Drew Gibson and trying to let that like not be in my mind for the tournament. <laughs> so plus three is tied 17th, but it's only three strokes out of seventh place. So I have the opportunity to creep back into the top 10, hopefully during the next round at Ivy Hill. If you guys want to watch that practice round, check that out right over here. But if you want to see like a chill, more full explanation of everything at New London, check that out right up there. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.